So my name is Wade Hornberger. I've lived in and around Lethbridge since 1970. My dad was always a proponent of big government and big business and you know he was my dad knew a lot about about stuff politically even though he was a dumb farmer he knew quite a bit but I listened to some of his stuff I heard and watched and watched reactions when my dad would say stuff about the the power wolves and the government and what's going to happen futuristically and now I'm seeing this trend and this trend that I'm seeing is the same one that he described for most of my childhood into my 20s then I think he just gave up he just wished that it would all go away but I'm going to tell you what I've seen in the last 25 years and it's kind of important that you listen to this because this is what is happening. So this is how it started, this is how it happened, and this is what's happening now. So 25 years ago, we were gonna do a renovation on the house. You know, we're starting a family and you know, we're gonna do a renovation and I'm a tree guy doing tree work and whatnot. Not a great one back then, but so we do this renovation. Now we have all this garbage that needs to be put into a bin. So, cause you know, my girl at the time uh, was cheap or pardon me, frugal. Uh, she went and she checked out all the prices for all the bins in the city of Lethbridge. She wanted to get her best price. So what ended up happening is she phoned five bin companies and it turns out the city of Lethbridge had the cheapest, most inexpensive bin of all the bin companies. Well, besides what my dad is saying about this and taxation and they have all this money and they can do whatever they want with it, here we sit in this, this, this uh, expedition of looking for a bin. Um, it turns out that the city is the cheapest. Well, why is this city, why is this city even in business to compete in the private sector for bin work? Yeah, sure they own the dump or they had some affiliation with the dump. Sure they had this and they had that. But why are they in the private sector competing for bins directly in the phone book? This is 25 years ago. So, 15 years ago, that wasn't a big deal back then, blah, blah, blah. So 15 years ago, they started this chipping contract. Well, I have a small family and I'm living on the north side and I have a truck and a chipper. Well, they decide to do this free chipping. Well, this free chipping is great for the city citizens. I mean, they enjoyed it for many, 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 many years. But what about the guy that's got a small family, a truck and a chipper? What happens to that guy? Now he's buying a city license and he lives in the city, so he's paying all his this and paying all his that. And kids are, one's in Wilson, one's in Winston. And you know, I mean, all, all, the, all, all, the, all is happening. So every single year that the city did a free chipping, I would lose all that work. Well, why is the city chipping? Now besides the, uh, you know, that yeah, well the city does this service and we pay all these taxes and this is great that they do this service. What about the guy in the private sector? You just stole his work. So in actuality, the city of Lethbridge legislated me out of business so that they could take the private sector business from people's yards so you, we, they wouldn't go into your yard and pull anything out and chip it. No, you had to go in and cut it and then throw it into the alley and then they would chip it under this contract. And they would get a private sector chipping contract to chip it. So they would legislate you out of business and then legislate somebody else to do all that work. Well, the first three years, those guys were from Nova Scotia. So I'm watching all this, I called it scorched earth every year. All this chipping going on of private sector peoples in their yards 
chipping legislated through the city out to a private contractor. And there was never a nickel made by any tree guy that ever did any chipping, period. At $250 or $200 a ton, that's ridiculous. So what ended up happening is they chip, 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 chip once a year, okay? Then um, everybody got ready for that. So it's, oh yeah, we don't need your services, Wade. Uh, we're gonna wait till spring and then we're gonna cut all our stuff and then the city's gonna chip it and Bob's your uncle. Okay, so I gotta deal with that contention. Not only that, but if you phone the city arborist and say, hey, what am I gonna do? I got all this tree work I need done. The city would say, well, make sure you get a certified, qualified arborist to come and do your work. So the city arborist is advising that you get a professional to come and do your tree work. But yet, the city promotes homeowner pruning. So we have this chipping in the spring. Be ready for us. Go buy a chainsaw from Canada Tire. Cut all your crap in your backyard. However you do it, I'm sure you're not an arborist to do it. And then throw it in the alley and let them come and chip the branches. Then about three years ago, they decided to buy the, all their own chippers and spend millions of dollars starting these chipping facilities all over the city so that you can throw your branches in a truck, your truck, drive them to a city-owned, city-run place and they have city workers pull those branches out and chip in through a city chipper. What about the guy with chippers and the private sector? What about the guy in the private sector with a chipper? We got screwed out of all that opportunity. So they wouldn't give us any contracts because they would hire Arborcare or Asplend or Davy Tree Care. So multi-billion dollar corporations are getting the, all the tree work. We never stood a chance. And then they would steal our work in the private sector by legislating us out of business. This is a hostile environment to be a tree guy. Now I survived, but how I survived is I went abroad. So I went to Pitcher Butte, and then I went to Tabor, and then I went to Medicine Hat, and I was there for a year. Then I went all around from town to town, I would buy these licenses. So I didn't have to work in the city of Lethbridge because it would be too upsetting because I would watch all these other contractors that were legislated through the city to, to do all my chipping. Then the city arborist says, you know, get a qualified certified arborist. Okay, so that $250 for a ton of debris in an alley is actually a $2,500 job in the private sector because I have to, I have to bring in arborists, dethatchers, cleanup crews, um, and, and people to do the work. So I would have to charge $2,500 for that $250 a ton debris. So I'm generating $2,500. They're stealing the work and generating $250. And this has nothing to do with what the city does for their citizens. Because if you look at what they did for their citizens, they provided this, this thing that many, many, many people used where they didn't have to deal with the trees. They made it easy. But in a democracy, this is not about city-run businesses. This is about private sector. The city is allowed to collect taxes, then administer that tax money to the private sector to get all that work done. They're not allowed to start hiring a bunch of arborists and buying a whole bunch of bucket trucks and chippers and then doing their own tree work. Fact is, is I watched for 20 years that knowing what I know about arbor culture and they butchered these trees. They abused, neglected and, and left so much work that should have been done. Fact is that if the city of Lethbridge doing their trees, and those trees were pets. They'd all be in jail right now. We have this problem right now. If you look at the tree work 
from my point of view as a professional arborist, you are sickened by their behavior. And you, this isn't the last that you'll hear of me. I'm gonna go to some of those trees, I'm gonna show the public how horrific it is to take a living entity and then just because it can't talk, you don't have to spend money on it. A pet would have barked and, and whimpered and cried until somebody ran to it to help it, got it to a veterinarian, did whatever it needs, shoot it, whatever. But trees don't talk. But Wade Horniger talks. And this is about these trees. And the trees are still being abused, neglected, and taken advantage of. And these are all working trees. A working tree is something that takes carbon out of the atmosphere from all the activity of the city and then turn that carbon through photosynthesis back to oxygen where now we can breathe. These are working trees. So if you all of a sudden had a, a team of horses and one broke a leg, if, these, if the situation was like that, it's like continuing to drive those horses with one with a broken leg. Then another one trips. It breaks its back. Well, they're still driving these horses. These are working trees. Those are working horses. And when something breaks down, you need to stop your team and you need to deal with it. The city of Lethbridge. It, now, that's, that's in the past. So the bins in the past. The tree work in the past. Well, now the city decided to start being real estate agents. They started to be in landfill owners. They've spent all this money, I think it worked out to, I could be wrong, $52 billion worth of assets the city has. So every year they're gouging you for more money and, and taxing you for more this and more that. What they're doing is they're putting their money into infrastructure. They're putting into their money into buying more buildings, buying more property. Then they would annex, this happened probably 10 years ago. So they annex 3,000 acres, they buy it for 3,000 an acre, they service it with hydro and electricity and all of it, and then they sell it for $184,000 an acre. That's, so they buy it for three, service it, and, and where does this profit go? And this is my next level, is it's called corporate leverage, which started about 12 years ago. So you have the city of Lethbridge, which is under the scrutiny of the taxpayer. Then you have the corporate Lethbridge, which is arm's length from the taxpayer. So there's no, there's nothing, it's a corporation. It's not a democratically um, certified entity. It's a corporation. So what now what happens is they figure out a way where they, by corporatizing, part of the city of Lethbridge, so I'm not under the scrutiny of the taxpayer, but we don't know any of this because this is these are all new rules that nobody's even created. But they found loophole after loophole and they pushed and shoved and tried to figure out ways of making money. And they had money to make money. So now they're in the real estate age, in, in real estate business. And all these developments, most of them are all city orientated with corporate profit in mind. Your city of Lethbridge has ballooned into this humongous business that's worth billions and billions of dollars every year. And nobody has said anything. I haven't heard anything. I haven't seen anything. I haven't, I've gone to the newspaper. I've gone to all that CTV and global and nobody will say nothing about anything. I figured they're all getting paid, or maybe not so much paid, but their business could lapse because they did something against the city of Lethbridge. There's billions and billions of dollars that are being squandered by the city of Lethbridge that should be going to the private sector. You wonder why they have a detour and a water main break and it takes six, seven, eight weeks I worked in the pipeline industry that had a subsidiary that worked in the in cities cities across Alberta sewer and water. I know how long that line should have taken on 16th Street where my girlfriend lives. I know 
how long that should have taken. It should have been a six or seven or eight day project. At the most, eight weeks. So why? Well, they're done at three o'clock. They start at seven. They, they, they got their, their unionized workers. They, they start their, they just, they get two hours, three hours worth of work a day done. At best, in the private sector, we don't get two or three hours of work done. That's small business. Big business, because they're unionized, they do three, four hours worth of work. In private sector, we need to make money. We need to generate cash. So what, what ends up happening is we work longer, and we work harder, and we work smarter and faster. Why? Because we're in the private sector, and we're there to make a profit, and if we don't do what we're supposed to do, then we lose money. City doesn't care about losing money. As a matter of fact, they created a whole system where they're trying to lose money. Then corporate Lethbridge picks up the pieces where even some of these, and I, I, I may be wrong, and please, let's get a few accountants in here to, to find out how wrong I am. But I figure the whole city is all getting billed out by corporate Lethbridge for profit. That's why at the end of the year, the city has one or 1 1.2 million sub subsidy or uh, um, overture, and then corporate Lethbridge has one or, so they just keep amalgamating and crunching the numbers, putting it all together, and making all this money disappear so that the next year they can increase your taxes. They're stealing all the private sector work. We have a weak private sector. And if you're gonna think that maybe one day when there's a disaster and all these uh, army of city workers are gonna come save us from this disaster, that's not gonna happen. But if we had a strong private sector in water, sewer, recycling, et cetera, et cetera, all this, we would be much better off because we would be receiving all those tax dollars in contracts. Instead, the city has decided to give all these tax dollars to big corporations or to themselves. Well, once they start giving it to themselves, there's no end. It's like this big, huge hole. No matter how much they generate, it's gone. <laughs> Private sector, there's trucks being paid, there's gas, there's this, there's that. There's all this small time stuff that keeps a small time economy going. In big business, they don't buy their gas from the local guy. They don't buy their trucks from the local guy. They don't buy nothing. They buy it all big, just like the Hutterites do. They don't buy a, a bat of yarn. They buy a truckload of it. And they buy it from the manufacturer for the cheapest they can. Well, where's any money in the private sector now? There isn't any. I don't know what to say. I know what the solution is. And that's let's steal our power back from our government. Let's steal it back. Let's put these guys to the test. In a democracy, you're allowed to collect tax dollars and then administer those tax dollars to the private sector. Not administer it to yourself or big corporate business where all we end up with is a bunch of jobs with a pension. Well, by the time most of these people are pensioned out, who knows what's going to happen with that money? The CPP made $30 billion last year. So they had to invest all that CPP to make that $30 billion. Well, if they can make $30 billion in CPP in the stock market, they can just as easily lose $100 million billion in the stock market in one year. Just as easy. That's a reality check. You might be working for nothing. You might be getting nothing at the end. You're trusting people that aren't trustworthy to take care of your money so that you have something at the end. Just take care of the money yourself. Save it. 
In the private sector, you're not making 18 or 20 or 30 bucks an hour. You're making 200 bucks an hour, but you're showing up with a machine that's certified and inspected and it's got um, insurance and it, it's full of gas and it's got a, a shop to drive into and, and all the care that comes out of that $200 an hour. But start adding those numbers up. We take our private sector and make it strong and get rid of these guys. We're all rich. You won't need a pension as long as that part of it doesn't get poisoned. But we can legislate it. Actually, all the legislation is still there. They're the ones that have made all the concessions to their advantage. This, my friends, this is the enemy here. We are in trouble. And in a disaster, I, I run a corporation called Southern Alberta Disasters Inc. Okay, so who's going to take care of us in a disaster? Nobody. You think the city workers are going to? How about this? In a disaster situation, even when the police, they're going to go home, they're going to take their uniforms off, they're going to go home and take care of their families. That's what I would do. So we're out in the cold. Who's going to feed us? Who's going to clothe us? How come, what happens when the electricity shuts off and the power and the gas? What are we going to do? It's minus 30. You got a four-year-old and an eight-year-old. Now what? Having all these drug addicts in the city of Lethbridge is complete lunacy. Everybody already has their story of being raped and pillaged and stolen from. I had my truck stolen. I had my van fisted through like four times. Debbie's had her garage fisted through at least seven times since this whole injection site. If you're a heroin addict, heroin is illegal. You shouldn't be supervised. You should get, get caught and go to jail. And then all these city workers that work at this injection site are all city paid employees. And if they're billed out to corporate Lethbridge, that means that that injection site is making a profit. Can you imagine that, sorry Stephen, that, that place is there, not to help addicts, but to help the city's bottom line. How many employees? Somebody should investigate this. We need, as a citizens group, we need to investigate what's going on here. It's not their city, it's our city. It's your home and it's your city. So let's take it back. It's time to take it back. It's time to make a move on these guys and put them to the task that a democratically voted in entity should do. And that's not think about themselves, but think about all those people that voted them in. Not forget about them as soon as you're voted in. Private sector is suffering because your city is stealing money from the private sector or from you. And there's opportunities that you would have that you don't have because they're taking them away from you before you know they exist. Thank you.